call on Government Order of the Day number two. Interrupted debate on first reading of Trade, Anti-Dumping and Countervailing Duties Amendment Bill. Members, when we are on the first reading of the Trade, Anti-Dumping and Countervailing Duties Amendment Bill, Mojo Mathis had the call and has two minutes remaining if she wishes. Does the member wish to take? No. Very good. Uh, the next speaker is our New Zealand, Ria Bond. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm proud to rise on behalf of the New Zealand First Party and my colleague Fletcher Tabato to speak to the first reading of the Trade, Anti-Dumping and Countervailing Duties Amendment Bill. This bill seeks to introduce a public interest test in New Zealand's anti-dumping and countervailing duties regime and a provision allowing for the duty to be deferred in cases of natural disaster and other emergencies. Dumping is a practice for those of you that are not aware where goods are sold at below cost, primarily as it means to drive local competitors out of business. Interestingly, it was Canada that first introduced such measures to counter US intrusions into the domestic market in 1904. I will try to give a very simple example for those members of the public who are watching or listening at home, or perhaps even driving in their car listening to and tuned into Parliament tonight. If another country produces too much material, such as concrete, and offers it to New Zealand, where we have a small concrete industry trying to compete within the domestic market, this concrete would flood our domestic market at a reduced price. Therefore, this can be seen as being anti-competitive practice, especially for the example I've just provided, the small concrete domestic market. How would this be considered as providing domestic industries with assurances that they can be protected against dumped, subsidised and injurious imports? In international trade, dumping often has the effect of endangering the financial viability of manufacturers in the importing nation. You can still laugh, Mr Simon O'Connor. New Zealand First will always stand up in this House to protect local manufacturers and local businesses. We are the only political party with true conviction and our first belief that we must put New Zealand and New Zealanders first. It's interesting, if you don't know that now, then you know it. If you don't know it, then you know it now, Mrs Bennett. It's interesting, isn't it, this world of politics? It really is. And today, Mr Speaker, I wish to extend my wholehearted congratulations to Minister Coleman for the speed by which he and his Cabinet have pushed this bill to its first reading. What an accomplishment. It was only this month that that Cabinet agreed in principle to the bill. And here, tonight, we see it right before our very eyes, like the speed of lightning. Some may call this efficiency, others may call this something else. This doesn't make us celebrate how efficient Minister Coleman is, it makes us worried about the motivation behind the how and the why this bill got to the House so quickly. Anti-dumping measures are designed to limit or ideally prevent a company from selling goods below cost to drive local competitors out of business. The World Trade Organisation has recognised that heavily subsidised markets overseas can undercut New Zealand businesses in the marketplace. Theoretically, having driven the domestic uh, manufacturers out of business, large multinational companies are then free to use their mighty market powers to fleece the domestic cons customer. As you can imagine, New Zealand, is adamant, New Zealand First is adamantly opposed to this tactic. The wider implementations of this bill are a huge concern to us. The Minister talks about a public interest test, but this is limited and we will seek to expand on this conversation further throughout the select committee process. We agree again that the anti-dumping and countervailing measures are accepted devices in trade treaties. However, however, New Zealand First warns the Minister that unless, that unless applied in a considered and consistent approach, this can actually do more to repress competition and actually encourage inefficiencies, despite what the Minister asserts in his speech. But done right, our domestic producers can move forward assured of the countervailing measures. The public interest test is, of course, imperative, and this supports a commerce Minister whose stated outcome is to support New Zealand business. 
But the question mark still exists, Mr Speaker. As the legislation describes, a public interest test is involved in assessment um, of the extent to which the cost is to New Zealand downstream industries and consumers of imposing a, du a duty would materially erode the benefit. New Zealand First agrees that the test should allow for broader public interest elements, such as competition and consumer welfare. So the question mark is the stand above um, a loan provision empowering the Minister to defer, not imposed, or be terminated or suspended. Clause 8 amends Section 3 and provides a new definition of emergency that allows the Minister to trigger these self-appointed powers. Again, another question mark is in relation to the public test. The Minister must consider only the cost to New Zealand downstream industries and New Zealand consumers. There's the first issue. Actually, that's a real issue, and it's huge. If the Minister considers it appropriate, the Minister may consider the domestic industry of a relevant third country. Mr Speaker, make no mistake, our support is only for the first reading of this legislation. It is imperative that the select committee process is able to take place. We reserve a final decision upon feedback from the New Zealand public and the experts in this space. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Speaker. Oh, uh, Simon O'Connor.